Hi, this is Paul with Helderberg, and today we're going to talk about Enzo, the D130. This is a celebrity. Enzo's had over 7 million views on Instagram. All right, let's get into it. Enzo, the D130, what can I say? It's iconic, it's rare, it's different, it's just, it just demands attention. But before I get into Enzo, let me tell you a little bit about the bespoke build process. The word bespoke means custom, and that's what we do at Helderberg Defenders. We custom build Land Rover Defenders to exacting specifications. We only work with the 300 TDI motor, and of course the five speed R380 transmission, which is a manual transmission. So the bespoke process, it's a really simple process. What we do is we have a conversation and I understand, are you looking for a beach cruiser, like a soft top D90 or a soft top D110? Are you looking for a D110 wagon or the very popular D130? After we decide that, I put together a build sheet for you that it outlines the build, gives you an idea of what it's going to look like and gives you a final price. You say, okay, yes, this is great. Then you put a 50% deposit down, which holds your build slot and gives you a defender because we have defenders in stock. We don't have to go out and look for one. And then I send you a welcome kit, which actually has leather swatches and headliner swatches. And we talk about your interior. We design that first because that takes a very long time to get done. And then once we actually start your build process, we start sending pictures to you so you can follow along as it's being built. Average time to build is about 14 to 16 months currently, subject to change based on demand. So that's the process. If you want to talk about a bespoke build, just reach out to me and we'll get started. All right, let's get into Enzo, the D130. The first thing I'm going to tell you about a D130 is it gets really confusing with a lot of individuals that they see a D130, which is a pickup truck version, and they confuse it with the D110 double cab, which is also a pickup truck. Let me tell you how to distinguish the difference. It's really easy. D130 is 20 inches longer, and the way you can tell it's a D130 is by the actual bed. The bed on a D130 is a separate bed. On a D110, it's all part of the body. A D110 double cab is a D110 station wagon, the five door that you've seen that's very popular, except it only has a double cab. That's the difference. All right, so Enzo, D130. Let's start with the grill. The grill really stands out. This really makes a difference. And what we did is we added the con grill system on here. So you can see how it sticks out farther not only in the center, but it also sticks out farther here because you don't see the marker and the turn signal light being, you know, being the point that's sticking out far. It's flush with the grill. So we have about eight different choices when it comes to grills, this being one of them. And of course, it's all custom painted here and we painted the black just to create some accent points. The other point you'll notice is the headlights. You'll notice this is a different headlight design than you see normally on any of our builds or other builds. And it has the driving lights built into it right here. Very bright LED headlight, as all of our defenders have all LED lighting throughout. The marker, the tail lights, the turn signals, the headlights, interior lights, and even the gauges are LED. Moving down to the bumper, this bumper is called a Bowler Race bumper. So it is a hard steel bumper, but it was just to give a unique, different design. Yeah, sure, I could have gone with a winch bumper and added a winch, but that wasn't the design I was going with on Enzo. That's the beauty of a bespoke build. It's deciding what type of feel, what kind of design do you want. So the bowler bumper is matched by a bowler steering dampener plate under here which you'll see that it has the oval holes that are matching, and then it has the red tow hooks. I put the red tow hooks on just for a little splash of color to kind of bring the things together. So with this actual grill, here's the dilemma if you wanted to do a winch bumper with a winch. It sticks out so far that your winch bumper would have to be out so far, it would look like it just got this big hunk of metal sticking way out in front of the vehicle, that which would really ruin the design. So if we're doing a custom design, you probably don't want to use the con grill 
because it just doesn't look right when you put a winch on the front. This is a standalone piece. And with the grill and then the winch bumper, it would just be too much going on on the front end. You'll notice that it does have a Puma bonnet. The Puma bonnet means that it's raised, that this is a more modern design where it actually has the hump in it right here. The other option would be a heritage bonnet, and the heritage is where it's recessed, it's down low. And then of course we do have the checker plate. So checker plate up here, uh, black or silver. I will tell you black is the one to go with. The silver always gets crusty looking in just a matter of a month or so. It does have the full roll cage on it, and it does have a heated windscreen, and of course it does actually have the vents uh, below the windscreen. So those vents do open up for fresh air. If this was the later model, the Puma model, meaning that later on in Land Rover's history, those vents would not actually open. So the color. I get asked all the time about what is the color and can they get the paint coat. This is a custom mix Helderberg color. It started out as a willow green metallic, but we did a different process. We added a little more metallic and a little bit of bronze into it to give it just a little bit of a different color. It's absolutely spectacular and it changes based on the lighting conditions. Right now I'm in direct sunlight and you can just see how beautiful it is. So that kind of covers the front end, but it's very obvious this has been lifted. We lifted it by three inches, and I'm going to get into the lift of what makes a proper lift, but we lifted it by three inches, and then we put 35 inches max, 35 inch max Trepador tires, or let me rephrase that, Max's Trepador tires. These tires are a mud competition tire, meaning they were designed to be in the mud and play in the mud. They are not designed for the highway or the road. They're just designed to do really well off-road. Therefore, when you're going down the road on these tires, they are noisy and you will never get them in balance. So it does give you a, a different driving perspective. It's never going to be a really smooth ride, but it's definitely a fun and exciting ride because the amount of people that are driving by, giving you a thumbs up and pulling up and taking pictures of this, this D130 is amazing. That's why I got over 7 million views on Instagram. You'll notice on the front, we do have the arches. We custom fabricated these arches. They're a little shorter than what the tires are. So whenever it's raining or muddy and I go out, it takes about a minute before I have mud slung up the side of the Defender. So yeah, it does concern me a little bit with the gravel since there's so many gravel roads of scratching, but thankfully it hasn't happened yet. Um, as you look further around the Defender, you'll notice that there's no rear arches, and I get that a lot of times. And the reason there's no rear arches on a D-130 that we build is because Land Rover didn't put rear arches on them originally. Because originally they didn't have these big wide tires. There was no need to have arches. That was an add-on. But Land Rover did add the arches in the front. They just do it, didn't do it in the rear. So for us to keep, keep with that original design, we followed that design. And yes, no mud flaps either because many of the Land Rover, the D-130s, didn't have mud flaps. And when you don't do mud flaps, it just kind of keeps the lines a little cleaner, gives it a little more unique design. And um, I, yeah, uh, just basically what I want to say is, if you're following Enzo and we're in the woods, just keep your distance because these tires definitely throw up a lot of stuff. All right, so that's the front. Um, one other thing, I guess I should really talk about the engine. It is a performance tuned, performance built 300 TDI. So when I say performance tuned, meaning that's a Helderberg exclusive, what that means is it has a VNT turbo, which is a larger turbo. It has a performance head. So the cylinder head actually has bigger water jets. It gets more water flowing through the engine. It has bigger springs. It's a uh, basically a more powerful cylinder head, which gives you more low end and mid range torque. You can definitely feel it. It's also quieter. And then I said VNT turbo, which makes sense. You have the cylinder head, you have the turbo, but then of course, to be able to get enough air into the system, it has an air, an intercooler that is eight times larger than the standard size. So that intercooler is really pumping some cold air through. What we did next is we modified the injection pump. 
So we changed the actual flow rate and the springs and what it, it's a custom build on the injection pump. Therefore, it's getting more fuel. It's pumping a lot harder than a standard injection pump. We got rid of the more or less the, the sludge control that's built into the motor because the sludge control is, causes more problems than it actually helps. And then it does have a three inch downpipe, the exhaust system, and it runs through to one silencer, but it's a three inch pipe almost all the way through. Actually, it is all the way through. So we're getting rid of the exhaust much quicker. So that's the engine. It is a five speed manual transmission. Uh, this was custom built for me, of course, and um, I'll eventually sell it. But uh, I have to say, I do love Enzo. I love driving this truck and shooting pictures of it. But let's move to the side profile and let's talk more about the suspension and the roll cage. All right, so we're at the side of Enzo. Again, you can really see the size. It's a D130, which is 20 inches longer than a D110. To explain that, D110 or D90, what that number stands for is center of hub to center of hub. What is the length of the vehicle from the center of hub to center of hub? So this is 130 inches long, technically 129 inches long from center of hub to center of hub. So it's 20 inches longer than a D110. And where you get that extra space is definitely the bed of the truck, but you also get the extra space in the second row. The front cab portion is the same size as a D110 or a D90. It's just your passengers have more leg room and you have a lot of room in the rear to carry whatever you want, like maybe a motorcycle. All right, so on the side, let me go back to the Maxxis Trepidor tires again. These are a competition mud tire. They are noisy, but boy, they look great. They're aggressive looking. They do well in the snow. They do well in the mud and they do so, so on the road this really noisy and they will wear down quickly. They're sitting on a, a 12 and a half inch wide wheel that's 17 inches tall. It's a bead locker style wheel. So bead locker, what does that mean exactly? Is the bolt pattern that you see around the, the edge of it, what it does is it holds the tire in place. These tires can be aired down to about six pounds of air pressure. So you can really make the pattern, the actual footprint of that tire much wider, which is great if you're in the sand or if you're in the mud, and believe it or not, even if you're in the snow. A lot of people think, oh, narrower tire in the snow is better, but if you're in really serious snow, like an Arctic de Defender that you would see in Iceland, it really wide tires, you wanna make sure that you can get a lot of that grip through the snow and really move. These tires don't do really well on the ice though, but any other condition, they do really well. Uh, bead locker style wheel that is a five spoke. And since we've actually done these bigger tires, the tire itself weighs 90 pounds, the wheels weigh about 50 pounds. That's a lot of unslung weight. What I mean by that is you think about that force that that 90 pound and 50 pound wheel is creating on that axle. It's putting a lot of stress and strain on the axles and the differentials. Therefore, when you do a truck like this, you have to do it properly or you're creating something that's just gonna tear apart and it's not going to be safe. So we have heavy duty axles, we have heavy duty uh, center differentials, heavy duty transmission, heavy duty transfer case. So it's important that you make sure that everything can handle that force. The pan hard arm in the front is heavy duty. The steering dampener in the front is heavy duty. Everything has to really account for that extra weight. And granted, I mean, sometimes when we're doing this, it can be for looks, but we've definitely done this to make it a real serious machine in the snow and the mud. And I have to be honest, I've really run this thing through the snow and the mud hard, and it's never failed me. So all heavy duty, it's important. When you lift a Defender like this, which we did, this is a three inch suspension lift. There's a difference between a body lift and a suspension lift. You'll see a lot of the trucks, what they'll do is they'll put some blocks between the frame and the body and raise it up. That's not a proper lift. All you're doing is it's all show, no go, basically. This was lifted by the suspension, meaning that we put bigger springs on it to get it up higher. Therefore, it accounts for these wheels and tires that increases the clearance. 
but whenever you lift it by the suspension, you create a lot of additional work to do it properly. So other things that we had to do was heavy duty propeller shafts, prop shaft is what it's called, heavy duty drive shafts, and then in the front and rear, if you look at different shots of it, you'll see these red bars that are running. Those are called radius arms. So whenever you lift it, and you're raising it, what you're doing is your axle is like this and it has the drive shaft, a normal situation. So when you lift up the suspension, you're actually twisting your axle, which is putting more strain on your prop shaft, your transmission, everything. So to correct that, you have to do a proper radius arm in the front and the rear. And what the radius arm does is it will actually twist the axle back to the proper perspective and makes the entire drivetrain run in a, a, a perfect line. So it's setting everything properly. This type of build though, I will tell you, you will never get the alignment and the balance on the tires right because these are competition mud tires. They are designed to really sling through the mud. So again, the bottom line is everything under this truck is heavy duty to be able to take all of the force of those wheels and tires and then plus the lift. So if you're going to do it, you have to do it right, which can be a substantial expense. So once you lift it, and this is a, a pretty safe point, uh, disclaimer, if you actually lift something, you roll it and you get hurt, you can't sue me. This is just to show you what I did for my own personal truck. But since we did lift it and we did all that, we did put a full roll cage. This is a roll cage by Safety Devices. And it's you'll see some of the roll cages that are just attached to the body right here, which serves no purpose whatsoever for safety. There's holes under this cage here in this point and there's the steel bar that goes all the way down the frame and it's bolted to the frame. So it's here it's bolted to the frame, right there it's bolted to the frame. So it's protecting the driver passengers right there with a full roll cage. And then you'll see how it's got all the different supports, but we added an additional layer of support right here inside the cabin is another roll cage inside that goes all the way down and is bolted to the steel frame again. So a lot of protection in here. But let me warn you, if you're rolling down the highway at 75 miles an hour in a truck like this and you roll it, there's probably no saving you. But moving into it, uh, you'll notice the hinges. These are custom uh, billet aluminum hinges that we put in. Um, this here, and you'll notice we got rid of the aluminum under the doors, which you'll see a lot of times you'll see checker plate. This is solid steel. These are called rock sliders, but of course we have the step up bars because it is so high. So the thing is the step up bars are going to take the damage when you're going over the rocks. But once you crush this, which is easy to fix, you've got this protection here to protect the body itself. Underneath the truck, we do have extra skid plates on the front and rear differential, on the transfer case, and on the transmission. So there's additional protection that is very thick. I believe it's about five millimeter, five millimeter steel that's under it and on the side. So all very, very strong steel components on there. You'll notice at the front, it is a tinted window. This is a new style glass. So this is not the original Land Rover glass but on all of our custom builds, we replace everything. The only thing we don't replace on our build is the frame, part of the body, and the engine block, because we're keeping all of those numbers matching. That's why I love the 300 TDI with the R385 speed manual transmission, that we keep all of those components together so we're not creating what we call a Franken truck. So if we were to throw in a Corvette motor, just know that you're going to have more power, more speed, but for heaven's sake, why would you want to have 500 horsepower in one of these trucks to roll down the highway at 75 miles an hour without ABS braking, uh, without safety constraints, without airbags or anything else? Because you cannot add ABS, you can't add airbags. I guess you could, but it would be under a tremendous expense. And then at that point, you just might as well go buy a G-Wagon or something like that because you've added all these computer components and the beauty of the 300 TDI is it does not have a computer. This vehicle, this engine, this drivetrain is highly reliable, no computer. You don't have to worry about tune-ups. You change the oil, you check the oil, you change the fuel filter, and that's what you do. 
and that's really all it takes. No spark plugs, no tune-ups. They just go. They're bulletproof. So, kind of on a tangent, uh, back here you'll notice that the windows are even darker. This is a 70% tint. This is a 15% tint. So by us doing the tint, this is legal in pretty much all of the states. So, because this is a factory tent. This is not a film that's put to the, actually on it. You'll also notice on a Helderberg, the sound deadening that we do. It's an amazing amount of sound deadening and you can hear it, how solid it is. On many Defenders and an original Defender, it's, it doesn't sound like this. It would sound like the front fender, which doesn't make sense for us to put sound deadening in the front fender, but your entire Land Rover, uh, other builds or a stock Land Rover sounds like this. Well, not a good indication, but it's just very tinny versus very solid. So sound deadening happens all through the doors, on the door panels, through the floor, on the bulkhead, so up here in this front, on the roof, in the rear, on the wheel wells, everywhere. Except in a D130, we don't do any sound deadening in the back. It doesn't make any sense. So this is a D130. Uh, what else can I say about it? Other than they are super rare, that you don't see them that often, fabulous truck, fun to drive, and even fun on the highway too, because you have that additional 20 inches of actual wheelbase, which really smooths it down and just makes it a nice cruising vehicle. Again, a lot of fun to drive. It uh, does a tremendous job in the woods, as long as it's not a real tight area because it is a big vehicle. It's about the size of an F-250 is what it is. Uh, Height-wise, with just the roll bar itself is about 84 inches. With the cage on top, we're approaching about 86 to 87 inches. So it might be a problem to fit into your garage, but of course we get rid of the actual roof rack here and uh, that will bring the height down. So it may be possibly it could fit into your garage, but we could have opted to go for a 33 inch tire, not raise the suspension as much. It would still look great and have that aggressive look, but it would fit into a garage even a little more. So that's the exterior of Enzo, the D130. So let's move into the inside so you can see the chocolate leather. So now we're inside Enzo, the D130, where I spend the majority of the time. So therefore I wanted to do something how do I put it? Um, comfortable, but not over the top. So what I did was a chocolate leather interior. So just understand the Helderberg interiors are 100% cowhide. So that doesn't mean it's just cowhide where you, you sit and you touch. It means everything is cowhide. The sides of the seats, the front part of the seat, the side of the console, everything. Even the dash is 100% cowhide. There's no vinyl in here or imitation leather. Um, moving on to the steering wheel though, that wood steering wheels, I love them. I also do love the leather wrapped steering wheels too. This is a Modalita, so it's a custom built steering wheel that is made by an individual by hand. This is one solid piece of walnut. Let me rephrase that. It's a uh, solid piece of walnut that was actually two pieces of walnut, but when they put it together, you cannot see the seams. It's perfection. And then the center, the boss here, is a billet aluminum that was cut out of a solid piece of aluminum, all aluminum, very nice and all custom done. So the gauges, LED backlit gauges with the stainless steel rings to complement the steering wheel and the handles and the knobs and everything else but they are LED, which means you can actually see them at night because if you've ever been in a Land Rover Defender or basically any Land Rover or Range Rover, you know that the brightness of the gauges are definitely a weak point that you definitely can't see them at night, but with the LED gauges that we do, you can, but we still keep the nice classic look of the gauges. They're, they're actually metal and glass, they're nice. So moving on to the dash, you'll probably notice the tweeters in here. So we have what's called a component system in here. Component meaning that we have tweeters in the dash and then we have mid-ranges down lower. So we're separating the signal, which gives you a, a much fuller signal. And then in the rear of the Defender, you'll notice that we have additional speakers, which are also Focal speakers. So Focal is made in France. They're supposedly handmade and they are the primo of primo speakers and audio when it comes to that. 
It does have an Alpine head unit. The Alpine head unit is Apple CarPlay. You'll see that it does, it, it will read your text to you. It has hands-free calling. The microphone is actually mounted in this section here. Uh, the system sounds good. It's Bluetooth. It uh, has the option to do XM Sirius radio. Uh, HD radio, so it, it's a nice sounding system and with additional speakers. It does have a subwoofer mounted that's actually hidden. We built a custom box and it's under the center cubby in the rear, so it's not apparent that it's actually there. And the reason for the subwoofer is not really for that bass, you know, that you think about that thump thump when you're sitting in a red light. It's for a nice full sound. So when you're listening to classical or acoustical uh, guitar, or jazz or rock, it has a nice full sound regardless. It does have a built-in EQ and it has a 500 watt amplifier that's under this seat right here that's powering all the speakers and the crossovers and everything else. So great sounding st stereo system that actually has Bluetooth. You'll notice the headliner is an Alcantara suede and you'll notice that it has stitching on the sun visors up here. Uh, it, so it's a contrast stitching, but it's just a beautiful and it's chocolate is what it is. The lighting, this the console light or the courtesy light is actually LED. It, you can make it white or red. Red is easier on your eyes at night, um, but it really brightens up the cabin. Uh, I mentioned the seats, that it's a chocolate leather. It's a bespoke leather and it has a caramel stitching to it in a diamond pattern. So this is called our Mulliner package is what it is. These seats, I will tell you, are very comfortable. And I get asked that a lot of times. Are they comfortable? And the answer is yes. It's amazing the number of people that have never ridden in a Defender for some time and I and what I mean some time for extended periods of time and I take them in a Defender and we do a longer trip and they say, wow, these seats really are comfortable. This is comfortable. I mentioned the sound deadening, so there's been a lot of sound deadening put through this cabin, so you can have a casual conversation. You don't have to yell at one another. You can do your hands-free calling. It's a comfortable cabin. Air conditioning unit is actually an underslung unit, so this is an aftermarket piece. Land Rover put it in their Defenders for a number of years. So we have two options when it comes to air conditioning. We have this underslung unit, and then we have our own custom build that we do where we put vents up here, in the center dash and we're using all the existing vents and we mix the air conditioning and the heat together. When we do that, it works much better in defrost. It's a much cooler, uh, meaning that the, the air conditioning is 10,800 BTU and the heating is 11,400 BTU. So it's more than enough to cool this cabin, plus all the sound deadening and the premium carpet and the Alcantara suede and then the thicker glass, it definitely helps in the cabin not only for sound, but for comfort. To expand on the bespoke process, it's like a custom suit. Not only are we designing the outside custom, but we're designing the inside custom. So since this is my personal truck, it was designed for me. If you're a tall driver, all we do is we put extended seat rails so you can have a lot of leg room, which can be comfortable for someone that's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 6 6. All we do is put longer seat rails into it. The design of the seat though, we're also designing the seat based on how do you like your seat. Do you like more support under your hamstrings, under your thighs? If so, then we're doing that. Do you like to be a little more fitted where it's tighter around you? Then we do that. We have four different seat designs, but then even the center cubby. So based on your sleeve length, how tall you are, we're designing the cubby height to be an armrest so it is a comfortable ride for you. Again, it's all custom done. Steering wheel, we have various steering wheel sizes, again, based on your sleeve length and also based on how big your belly is too. But this is a 15 inch steering wheel. We can go a little larger or we can go a little smaller. So everything is designed specifically to you. So that's the interior of Enzo, the D130. It's plush, it's comfortable, it has heated seats, padded seats. You can go for an extended period of time and be in comfort. So now let's move to the back so you can really understand where you're getting that extra room, that extra storage when it comes to a D130. All right, so we're at the rear of Enzo, the D130. Here's a telltale sign to be able to tell the difference between a D130 and a D110 double cab is the tail lights. If you notice the tail lights on a D130 where it has this section right here, the way they're stacked, it looks a lot different than it does on a D110. 
also on the back, you'll notice that the tailgate is different where you actually have the latches right here and the way it folds down. It's just, it's a different design. It's just, it's just very rugged. It's, it's a great looking design, but the big way to tell the difference between a D110 and a D130 is that you can see that the bed itself is a separate bed that's sitting on top of the frame versus a D110. It's all part of, it's a unibody is what it is. So there you go. The D130 definitely gives you some additional room over a D110. The bed size itself is 67 inches long by 65 inches wide. So again, that's 67 by 65, a lot of room. And if you're the kind of person that could use the functionality of a pickup truck, what better way to actually have a really cool pickup truck to go and pick up stuff or whatever you need to do. I mean, it's got a really good payload. It's just, it's, it's just fabulous. It's beautiful, it's different, it's unique and it's only going up in value, so what else can I say on that? But anyway, you'll notice something else that I do on a lot of my designs when it comes to a D130 or even a D110 double cab that you won't see the tire, the tire carrier on the rear of the truck. And the reason being is I feel that the rear of the truck is so beautiful and you put this big tire hanging off the rear. Not only does it actually create more stress for the rear of the body, but just back there bouncing around, I, I just don't find it very attractive. I want to see the rear end of the truck because I think it's just a beautiful view and I mount the tire in the rear back here or I mount the tire in the bed up against the, the windshield itself. And I've had people say, or, or the rear glass itself, and I've had people say, well, I can't see out of the rear view mirror. Well, if you've got it hanging on the back, it's still blocking view. Uh, just if it's up there, it's blocking view. You can see a little bit, but uh, I just don't like the, the aesthetic of it hanging off of the rear when it comes to a D130 or a D110 double cab. And you do have your side mirrors too. So that's the rear of the truck. Everything in this is heavy duty. And when you're going down the road, you can definitely feel that you're in a very heavy vehicle. It has some substance to it. And uh, if you need measurements, just go to Heldeberg.com if you need additional measurements. If you're thinking about us doing a custom build for you in a D130 and you're trying to understand if it will fit in your garage. You might have to be a little concerned over the height if we do the raise, but lengthwise, if you can fit an F250 in your garage, you'll be able to fit a D130 in your garage. So that gives you some perspective. So to see more videos, more pictures of Enzo the D130, just go to Helderberg.com. Currently, this isn't for sale, but I am taking, let me rephrase that. It's not available right now, but I am taking deposits on it because at the end of this year, then I will have had my fun with it and it will be time to sell it. All right, so Heldeberg.com, more pictures, more videos.